What's up and welcome back. Thanks for clicking on my face. I'm John Stark from MacMovieGuy.com, your favorite blind film critic. Blind film critic. And I'm reviewing today a documentary. Eight people have seen this on IMDb, so this one is going to absolutely blow up on my channel, but I love film, so that's why I'm here. Uh, and this is Happy Campers, so I am excited to be reviewing independent film. I'm excited that I get screeners and I'm excited to talk about it. Um, so this is because I'm recognized as a, as a film critic and I get to talk about film criticism and I got a screener offer for Happy Campers, which is making its debut on VOD today. Look at that. And I got to see it like slightly early. Technically I could have seen it like I could have had this review out like the day before, but I just life, you know, I got, I think I got the link on Wednesday and I could have put this out on Thursday, but it's going out on Friday, the day it actually comes out on VOD, whatever, life, it's fine. It's happy campers. You didn't know about it. Don't act like you did. And <laughs> it's fine. Um, so yeah, uh, addressing the elephant in the room, it does not have audio description. Uh, it's... I did ask. Uh, I always ask for a screener when I I say, uh, please, you know, if English audio description is available, please send me that link. I know it's not always available. Uh, it depends on the distributor. I'm starting to get films that are really independent and uh, just kind of are getting sent out their stuff for publicity, you know, for awards consideration. Um, Honestly, just to get press, the fact that somebody on YouTube is reviewing Happy Campers at this point is probably uh, just good for business. So, which I don't mind doing, because again, I love film, and I love talking about film, and I love uh, pushing back against the conception that blind people don't watch film. Uh, and we would like to, absolutely. I'm a part of a forum uh, on, on Facebook full of blind people that love talking about film and lamenting the lack of audio description and its quality and everything whenever it is or is not available and all those shenanigans. Am I going to hold that against happy campers? Man, I think this film doesn't have, I don't know what this film has behind it. The one thing I would say is I know that some film festivals are pushing more and more into accessibility requirements. Um, and I think it's really on the film festivals to start requiring audio description because I noticed this film did have closed captioning. Uh, so a deaf film critic would be, would be having a heyday here. Uh, unfortunately for me, I, uh, this film is, it's a little difficult to get through and uh, I'm not trying to bash our lovely director, Amy here, but um, yeah, this film, this film needs audio description. Um, I I got the idea. I got the gist of what it's about. Uh, it's about a community that is facing uh, not even a community. Well, I guess it's sort of a community. It it feels like it's a it feels like it's a twenty four seven community, but it also pitches itself sort of as a vacation community. But the way people talk about it, uh, I'm not sure everybody leaves. So <laughs> I I wasn't like a hundred percent convinced that everyone leaves. I think some people might stay there year round. Um, so uh, it is what it is. I mean, some of these vacation towns all across America, they're, they're like that. I mean, they have their influx of people who either summer slash winter there, depending on what type of vacation town it is. Um, but there are still the people who live there. It's not like it doesn't turn into like a ghost town. You know, you just abandon hope all ye who enter. So I would not be surprised if even this little uh, sort of shanty town of a uh, of a vacation, I don't want to say like RV mobile home park type thing, uh, if it's actually, you know, something that doesn't have permanent residence, what I would say. Um so it is facing uh they're they're facing expulsion they're facing uh the the fact that their land is being developed 
I guess it's been sold. Somebody, it's, you know, it's, it's like a campground, right? So somebody obviously bought the land in a campground and the people who have been living there and, and camping there, uh, I guess in perpetuity, uh, they are having to, you know, get their stuff and, and leave. And it's heartbreaking for them because some people have been there. I think one person said like 40 years. So, uh, wow. Uh, that's a lot. That's a lot of time to stay in one place and to keep going to one place. And obviously the memories that have been created and, and they talk about how they've seen people who come there and then now it's their children coming there with their grandchildren, you know? So it's like it's generational at this point. Um, so this place means a lot to them and we're just developing it. So, you know, documentaries like this almost, they they really only shine in festivals that allow them to shine. Like documentary film festivals or, or uh, festivals where, you know, smaller festivals, they, they kind of get trounced because every once in a while uh, you end up, they have to face off against some sort of like social justice, social warrior documentary. So a documentary like this, which is really just sort of like focusing on uh, a group of people and uh, their life and what's important to them and why it's changing and maybe why that's not a great thing is has would have no shot in the grand scheme of going up against something like 20 Days of Mary Ball. Like, how do you even put those two against each other? Does it mean that Happy Campers is a bad documentary? No, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that that, that at all. Um, but, I mean, 20 Days of Mary Paul is showing, like, actual death and destruction. And, you know, uh, documenting that and showing you unflinching horrors of war, much like in the days of Vietnam, this one is showing you sort of, uh, people who are being forced to relocate, uh, but they'll be fine. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody, <laughs> there's, it's, these people didn't like stand their ground and have to be physically removed by like a militia or something like that. This film doesn't end violently. Spoiler alert. Uh, I guess, but yeah, it's, I think people gravitate towards um, some more of those, uh, you know, uh, something's wrong in the world and we need to change it. And Happy Campers doesn't really suggest too much that there's something that we could be doing to help these people. How do we help these people? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like it's jumping in here and saying, like, if we don't do something, these people are going to lose the land that they live on. Um, it's just kind of like, it's already lost. So it's already like, well, this is, this is the life that they had and now it's gone. That slice of Americana, that slice of life has passed. And, uh, but this is what it used to look like. And this is their story. And I think it certainly is, an, it's certainly a nice break in terms of documentary when, Every documentary feels like it has a purpose or is about a celebrity. I, I call it content creation nowadays because it seems like we have so many documentaries where we're like, Federer, 12 final days. I'm like, oh, God damn it, whatever. It's just, these are not real documentaries. These are just people who are like getting paid money by streamers to create content at this point. It's just like, whatever, do your thing. You know, you do you. But documentarians have benefited so much from streaming services because their like nonfiction content is is easy to produce and if you can make it about somebody so so that people will click on the name you know and they're like oh yeah I know who that person is yeah I've always wanted to watch something about them you know great let's do it <laughs> here's some money make a really cheap documentary go do it um but this is somebody actually had the idea to do this. This is obviously, this has to be on some level personal to the director. This has to be, there has to be a connection, you know? Uh, and, and you can see it because the filmmakers, the, uh, I, I directly remember, even though 
even though I don't have audio description, so I'm missing a lot. Like Amy, if you want to talk, I'm on Instagram at Mac the Movie Guy. But uh, we can talk about audio description. But yeah, it's uh, <laughs> absolutely is the kind of documentary where uh, I think she's actually involved because I heard people say Amy. No, Amy's a common name. So it may not be the director. It could just be the other Amy that's already there. They may not be referring to the Amy that is, you know, directing the film. But I, maybe, it, maybe you know, because it's not like, I didn't see her appearing sort of like, you know, uh, like the documentarian that's like walking through the village, like she's on 2020, you know, where she's directly interviewing people like, so how do you feel about this? Can you tell me a little bit about your life? You know, she's not like walking through. It doesn't feel like that. It feels very much like a, I'm going to put a camera here and we're just going to see what's happening. And, uh, if you'd like to talk into the camera and tell me your thoughts, and then I'll edit out the part where I just said that, you know, like she doesn't feel like she's the story at all. And she's just letting them tell their story. So, um, but yeah, I, I wish I knew what these places look like. Uh, you get kind of like a description of them, like, but I, it's very disconcerting when you just get like, little bits and pieces like some of the stuff that they vocalize is like what kind of hell are you living in sir there's this part where they're like yeah that's where the possum comes out at night and it goes under our kitchen and i'm like what there's in in your house like conceptually i was like there's a i wouldn't be able to sleep <laughs> I, would, I, was just, I was concerned i was like wait so there's a possum that comes in through some some place you have something in your house where the possum comes in and then goes under your kitchen sink what move i would move i would <laughs> i would feel like i'm not doing this i can't be here uh I'm, there's a possum inside my house i can't do it um <laughs> I mean, so like sometimes i'm just I'm like, am I getting it right? Like, am I understanding? Is this inside? Is this outside? Is this, what kind of situation are we in here? What are we talking about, please? You know, uh, but all I got was sort of like that vocalized uh, summarization from uh, from the person uh, who was being invaded by the possum. <laughs> and I was just so bothered by it. Uh concerned really <laughs> for everybody's safety <laughs> uh but i guess they had a trap set up they were gonna catch that possum and that's by by god i hope they did before this before the the camp got torn down i hope they won the war against the possum but um yeah it's uh it's just, it's those things. It's like people talking about their houses and, and so like, I'm thinking like, okay, so it's like a mobile home, home park. And, uh, there's uh one guy that's talking about like how he had all these, this house had all these different rooms and he's like, well, this was the naked room. And I'm like, if you're in a mobile home, like how many rooms do you have? Is it like a double wide? Is it like, what is, you know, like it's those kind of descriptions where it's like, I wish I had a better understanding of the spaces in which these people were living in. Um, and also the outside, like, people were growing a garden. I love when people grow things, too, and you're like, oh, man, you must be cooking. Do you have a great kitchen? But these things typically don't really have kick-ass kitchens, you know? Um, so, but they're growing, this, this one woman had, like, and basically, like, half of her, half of the things she lifted off were herbs, uh, listed off were herbs in her garden, like, not actually food, um, so, like, she's like, I've got dill. I'm like, great. So you cook. In what? In your, what, like, what is, what is your cooking situation look like? So, yeah, it's, it's very much like, I was very interested to know what it was that this place looked like for them. Uh, with all their different homes. Because they talk about individuality, too, and their painting. And uh, the one, 
one one of them is like, oh, I painted this wall, and then I came back with the acrylics later, and I I like to paint over it again. I like to paint th things that are new. And one time I thought about painting dolphins. You know, it's like I'm great. I have no idea what your situation looks like at all. You know, so I have no point of reference to go off of. And plus, there are long periods of time where we go without anybody talking, which for me is just kind of like sitting there and listening to not much. I mean, this film sort of has some score to it, but not really. Uh, I would really call that a score. I mean, it occasionally has some music, like, lightly. Uh, so it's not like dead silence, uh, but it's a lot of dead silence. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it, it didn't completely ignore, but it does kind of feel like I'm just waiting beat to beat to beat to get through. Uh, like, when is the next person going to speak? Um, sometimes documentaries, what's hilarious about this is that this is the kind of perfect documentary where audio description would like flourish and really help shape this documentary. There are plenty of documentaries where it's just a bunch of talking heads and those documentaries sometimes get audio description and it's like almost wasted. I hate saying that because I think everything should have audio description, but when you when you try to interject between a whole bunch of people who are just it's it's a whole bunch of people just sitting in front of a camera and just talking about the events and recounting or giving their expert opinions uh and every and very rarely do they ever break so you can actually describe anything uh i mean i've sat through so many documentaries i don't know who's talking because they don't even have time to interject and be like this is who this is and it's like these documentaries work if you put name and why I should care, you know, <laughs> like, who are you and why are you speaking? Why have we invited you to speak? Are you a witness? Are you an expert? What are you an expert in? You know, I mean, if we could get those basic things in there, uh, those documentaries would work a lot better, but sometimes it's just, it just becomes kind of a jumbled mess of people speaking. And here it's like, there's a lot of just like looking around. It's a lot of just do you see what I see? And I'm like, I actually don't. I wish I did. I used to. So it's one of the reasons I do this is because I was sighted and now I'm not. So I, I know completely what it's like to have that fully sighted experience. And I'm trying to get uh, as much of that as I can for the blind community now that I've walked both sides. So I think Happy Campers is probably a good documentary. Um can't really specifically grade it because I don't have enough context to grade it but I have no reason to say don't watch this it didn't feel like something where I was like oh this is dumb this this has no point it was pointless this is poorly made I don't think there's any none of that applies here but it's just with grades it's like it's very specific and especially with like point systems like for the even for the people who do like um I'm gonna give it an 8.6 like, if I start factoring in the fact that, uh, that my functionality, uh, like, I couldn't follow it because it doesn't have audio description, then the grade gets lowered, you know, because then that's my personal experience. But I don't know that that it really reflects what the movie is. So um, I love to just encourage audio description use in the future. Um, ever since I was nice enough to the... Uh, Oscar nominated short in my life with Dix that the filmmakers actually reached out to me and then we connected and actually that film ended up getting audio description my um, year of Dix the animated short Oscar nominated animated short um, I'm trying to keep an open mind so uh, I use the term unwatchable a lot when I feel like uh, everybody had every reason in the world to put audio description they had every opportunity uh, afforded to them and it didn't happen here. I don't know how much the filmmaker knows about audio description and I feel like there really isn't a distributor to back it that uh, has, that is informed enough about audio description. I don't see a, uh, a distributor behind this like Sony where I'm like, well, Sony knows what audio description is. <laughs> so... <laughs> Because if, if that was the case, then I'd be like, unwatchable. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Amy, but <laughs> Sony should have come in clutch with some audio description on this. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, 
I, I think this kind of just is in limbo. And uh, I, 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 I instead would say if you're if we're, if you're one of my sided viewers, go ahead and watch it. Uh, it's on VOD. I don't know what it's if it, it is planning on heading to a streaming service at any point. Um, there are some streaming services that are just entirely dedicated to documentaries. I would imagine this kind of goes there. I think this is probably lower profile. However, documentaries are so weird because the documentary branch is so unpredictable that uh, it could get shortlisted. You know what I'm saying? Like it could find its way onto the Oscar shortlist. This film did a qualifying run. As far as I can tell, it should qualify. Uh, it had a theatrical um, at least some sort of a theatrical run, uh, which should have met the minimum requirement to be considered. Uh, and the documentary branch rarely likes to follow trends. Uh, they, every once in a while they do with something like 20 Days of Mary Paul, where they just, you know, can't ignore it. But sometimes you have a documentary like Goodnight Oppie, where it's just like, oh, everybody loves it. It's well-reviewed. Documentary branch doesn't even shortlist it. So uh, many people were surprised that they shortlisted still a Michael J. Fox story simply because they don't typically even shortlist a film like that, let alone nominate it, which they didn't go on to nominate. So something like Happy Campers absolutely could just slide in at the last moment. They could be like, oh, this this thing was great. We really loved this. this." And people would be like, I don't even know what this is. And I'd be like, I already watched it. Ha, I caught, I got you guys. <laughs> it slid in. It seems like it's a pretty good documentary, but I would love for it to be accessible to everybody. So, um, yeah, if I was on the tomato meter, I would, I would click fresh, but I don't know what, I, I don't know that I can actually put a number to it because I don't, I feel like that number could change if it's, if this had audio description, you know, if I was given accessibility uh, as a blind person for this film, that's where the devil's in the details, you know, is when you're asking me, is it a B or a B plus, you know, is it an A minus or a B plus? Is it an A or an A minus? You know, it's like, those are the little things that are shaped by audio description is like, what is the camera showing me? Because like the camera could be showing me like a puddle on the ground every time. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It's so random because it's like, I really have no idea what is like what we're capturing. So uh, I would love to know more. Anyway, uh, that's it. I, I'm not grading it, uh, but I am giving it sort of like a positive-ish review um, and explaining why I can't really give you that definitive answer. Uh, I, I, I just, I don't feel comfortable slamming independent films with my unwatchable grade that I feel com I feel so comfortable with like major titles when they don't have audio description when Disney doesn't pass through the audio description that they created uh to the new uh first omen uh to Hulu yeah I have no problem with that because I know that a an audio description track exists and b that's just sheer laziness and it's disrespectful to the blind and visually impaired community here I'm not even sure the filmmaker knows what audio description is so I would love to just have a conversation instead and just give the goodwill and put this out there for the world to see and say, watch Happy Campers. I think, I think it's a good film. So anyway, um, it reminded me so much of vacationing as a kid and, and like going to different places. I didn't have like one place, you know, uh, I was sort of the, of the family that felt like we should try different places and different experiences, you know, although I did go to Disney a lot as a kid, but, uh, not every year, not every summer, <laughs> but yes, I, I, like more than, more than most kids get to go to Disney. I've been to Disney. So anyway, um, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I will see you guys on the other side.